Mercedes did not really disappoint because you know everybody expected Mercedes to maybe just try and copy paste the side pods but as you expect from a quality team like Mercedes they've come up with their own version of the white side pod philosophy now what is their own version so they did not ditch the mid wing or the cis tube wing that we so call as the mid wing and they've gone ahead and integrated this mid wing with the side pods and also added some vertical cascade like winglet which is a quite innovative and novel feature of the mercedes w14b so let us try and look in detail at some of these components on top of which they've also brought a new front suspension and additionally they've also gotten a new floor to basically change their entire you know aero philosophy per se so let's first start with the front suspensions right so they've come up with an anti dive suspension setup which has two basic reasons one is mechanical and one is aerodynamics the aerodynamic reason is that the suspensions are the bridge between the flow field coming from the front wing going into the floor and onto the side pod so any big flow philosophy change uh, in terms of aero demands an optimization of the front suspension as well to deliver the desired flow field onto the rear end of the car which is in this case the floor and the side pods itself mechanically what's happening is quite interesting so as the name suggests under braking what the anti dive suspension does is reduces the dive of the front end of the car now what this allows the car to do is this allows the car to run lower because there is less variability of the pitch of the car under braking and because it allows the car to run lower um chances are that in these regulations where the floor is very dominant in terms of downforce you would be able to have um you would be able to run with a higher downforce package or the floor would be more loaded across a range of conditions as you go through the corner i mean why didn't mercedes think about this to begin with right it's not like they don't have smart engineers they have very capable engineers but the re the back draws of a suspension like an anti dive suspension is that it reduces the feel uh, of the car to the driver so it's quite um let's say it's not very obvious to the driver that the car does not pitch under braking so it reduces the sensitivity or the dynamic sensitivity that the drivers get or the feedback that the drivers get from the car as they go through corners again this is not the thing that would basically you know close the gap of two or three tens to red bull but it is something that maybe fits well with the aero philosophy um that the 2023 regulations require which is namely the white side pod and the floor being powerful so providing a stable platform for the floor to perform so let us talk about the side pods and let us talk about what is novel about them because in terms of the white side pod philosophy and what it does we've spoken about it multiple times uh, and if you want to know more about it jump onto my channel and check out some of the videos that i've done about the white side pod so just in short the white side pod allows you to manage the front wheel wake effectively and also creates a lot of you know outwash onto the floor edge which helps in the extraction of the front floor and um, this has other benefits also but what mercedes have which is quite novel about them is that they've integrated the cis tube wing or the mid wing so as we call it onto the white side pod philosophy so this gives them tools um that other people don't have to play around with now this can again be um just a limitation of their chassis and that they've worked around it or it might be a purpose driven feature on the car another really interesting bit on the car is a vertical cascaded winglet on the cis tube wing itself and this is extremely interesting because this is almost like a mini barge board and it almost breaks some of the ideas that the FIA had in terms of wheel wake management so it's going to be really interesting if they are able to keep this vertical winglet i'm pretty sure it must be legal cuz mercedes wouldn't introduce it without it being legal however uh whether they are able to keep it on the car uh, is it within the spirits of the rules we'll find out but what these are basically doing is um you know the vertical winglet will cast off a strong vortex and the cis tube wing or the mid wing is going to cast off another vortex and these vortices are going to merge together downstream and then the idea is that can you use this vortex to create downwash onto um the side wall 
off the side pod itself so that you can direct air through the undercut towards the mouse hole and the rear tire area that small gap between um, <clears throat> you know the mouse hole and the rear tire where there's a lot of um, you know it's a very sensitive area because you can feed the diffuser through this place you can also manage the rear tire uh, squish from this place and it has a huge impact on the overall diffuser performance in addition to that uh, you know the top part of the side pod is quite conventional it looks more like an alpine mclaren type of top side of the side pod where the gullies are not as aggressive as aston martin but they are present and then the airflow uh, going through these gullies are targeted to be delivered towards the beam wing which is again an important part and controls the efficiency aspect of the entire aero philosophy let's talk about the floor now because along with the white side pod philosophy comes a new floor which complements that white side pod philosophy the novel part about it is this vortex generator that is present very close to the chassis uh, the reason only mercedes can do this as compared to any other team on the grid is because they came up with this sim side pod design the chassis were actually smaller than the required volumes in the regulations so there is this bit in the mid chassis volume wherein basically there are no regulations inside so if your chassis is slimmer than the volume requires it to be you can actually put bits like a vortex generator on top of the floor edge which no other team can account for for example so um, really interesting feature on that now what it's going to do is it's going to create a vortex that will create outwash onto the um, you know on top of the floor which would be useful for them to manage the lower tire wheel wake and also create a lot of extraction from the front floor bit and um, this would again be in that same direction of pushing the outwash philosophy of the white side pod so it's basically you know it's managing it's all about managing the tire wheel wake as you go downstream coming to the g line or the intersection between the side pod and the floor top edge you can see that there's a double kick line or a double re or a double reflex almost which is again an interesting feature like we would have to do cfd to try and understand what it's really doing which we might so stay tuned for that now if you look at the floor edge wing this is gigantic in length and it's really interesting because red bull came up with this idea of really maximizing the length of the floor edge wing but mercedes have taken this to the next level it extends almost along the entire floor edge length which is a very interesting feature the way it works is quite no, not simple but not very intuitive also so you have a lot of flow that is coming from the top edge of the floor and if you are able to seep it underneath then you can create local suction onto the floor edge so that is one advantage in my estimate it would be at least around 15 to 20 points of downforce but you have to do again some cfd to figure that out and also what it does is because it creates an outwashing vector onto the floor edge uh, any inwash that is coming from the floor edge itself using that tip vortex which will eventually happen uh, is going to be restricted so it creates like this mini skirt kind of effect um, that you get along the floor edge which is very very important in making sure that you can extract the maximum out of the floor so this is what the floor edge is doing and i think it's quite interesting some really interesting features on the w14g well, chances are that the W14 is not going to be a killer at Monaco because this car has changed mechanically and aerodynamically. And I'm pretty sure Mercedes will try and go in different setup directions to try and understand the car. So don't expect wonders from them. And even if you do see wonders from them, don't expect the same thing in Barcelona. But because Monaco is really not the greatest data point for you to have, the, you know, the track is really bumpy. So you might not collect the right kind of mechanical data that you want to collect. The ride heights are completely different to a normal track. And even the aero data that you get might not be the cleanest because of the traffic um, you know, equation. So Monaco, not the best place to introduce the update, but they need to give a feel to the drivers about the concept. And I think that's why they've still gone for it. So in terms of when Mercedes would have started, in kind of building or redirecting their resources towards the W14B. I think Andrew Shovlin quite clearly said it that after the Bahrain testing and after the Bahrain race, they knew that they had to take a big step forward and their current concept would not be able to do it. So I think after Bahrain is when they literally started. And you know, what does this mean for this year's um, budget? I mean, it takes a huge chunk of their budget out, but 
you know it is worth spending that budget in understanding the car this year like the rest half of the season so that next year when they come up with the car um, they can go all in in terms of what they want to do and the development plan for next year i mean it's a compromise for mercedes but it's good to start now uh, as they've got that direction quite early on from bahrain itself rather than starting let's say in barcelona understanding no we have to ditch this car and we have to start with the new concept so they are still using this year's budget on this year's car but it has taken some hit but not too much i would say